Well, so I just been... ask you with suicide when you're going through. Um, my friend's son, but he, at, they didn't realise at the time that he was diagnosed with schizophrenic yeah. and he was going to kill. But they tied him to the chair and stopped him. So you were saying not to stop somebody committing a suicide, but in that case, or cases like that? Um, see, what really needs to be addressed is the spirit influence. Mm -hmm. So if the spirit influence was addressed, he wouldn't have wanted to commit suicide. Yeah, but it wasn't at that time. Mm. So but this, see, this is the problem, is because we don't know the truth, we start doing other things, mm -hmm. not knowing the truth of what we're doing either. See, if we knew the truth, then, like you've asked me what's the appropriate thing to do, oh. the appropriate thing to do would have been, he had schizophrenia, he needed to address the issue of the spirit attraction. <coughs> now, if he had help, been helped to do that, the spirit would never have got to the condition where he could influence him to try to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. And it would never have happened. So how could God manage that? All you need to do is talk to the spirit, yeah, and and talk to the person as well, of course, because there's an attraction between the two. The same with manic depression. You've heard of manic depression. <laughs> manic depression is a similar state. Um, manic, the manic highs are due to spirit, spirit, heavy spirit influence. The manic lows are due to the spirits not being able to maintain influence anymore because the body's so depleted, and so the body just goes bang, right, right, big, mm. big big blackout mm -hmm. on the body. And so, and then the cycle continues because the person attracts it, they feel powerless and they want to feel powerful. So a lot of manic depressive people are addicted to the high. Mm -hmm. They're addicted to the feeling of powerfulness mm -hmm. and they don't want to feel their powerlessness. And that encourages spirits who want to also feel the same feelings through them on the earth as well. And that's why in their highs they do strange things sometimes. Mm -hmm. and I knew one man who could act he was 66, and he could walk around on his hands all day. Now, obviously, when he came down off of that, his shoulders killed him for, for months. Because <laughs> it was the spirits doing that, and keeping him in that state, see? But he could do that all day. Um, so is all schizophrenia um, caused by... All schizophrenia is, is spirit influence. In fact, almost all so-called mental illnesses, aside from depression, mm -hmm. depression's a bit different, but all kinds of mental illnesses are due to spirit influence. So you've healed some of these cases with schizophrenia? It's really easy to heal them, yeah. For us to do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of you have the opportunity to do that. You just need to acknowledge the spirits there. Um, see, a lot of times, what, what does the medical profession do with the schizophrenic? They say, these voices aren't in your head. They are caused by your brain doing something that we don't know. Which is the opposite of the truth. These voices are in their head and they're caused by some real people who are connected to them. Do you follow me? Now, if they were acknowledged in that way even, the whole outcome would be quite different. Right? But it would have to scare them for quite a while though. How would you... Not necessarily. If you, are, if you explained it in a calm way and with love, like how? Why would it? Why would it be a frightening thing? All of us have spirits around us. I just explained that yesterday, right? All of us have hundreds of spirits around us at any time. They've just got some that are in their head all the time, because they're mediumistic in many cases. They actually are. They're actually got some abilities, natural abilities that we don't have, and they're mediumistic. And all we need to do is encourage them to show them how to use that skill, use that ability they have. You know, and not be afraid of it, and not you know, not try to get away from it. A lot of them go to the drugs to get away from the mediumistic ability, which actually attracts even darker spirits. So you get this cycle happening where they don't feel they can speak openly and honestly to people because if they do, everyone will say they're crazy. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, you can talk with spirits, and these people are talking with spirits all day in most cases. You know, quite often I see older people walking along the road who are so-called schizophrenic, nattering away to themselves. No, no, you know, talking as if somebody else is there. There are more than one person there with them. And you can feel them and see them if you, if you develop those abilities. And you can talk to those spirits and say, hey, you know, hang on a sec, this is not very nice, what are you going to mean to this person? You know, and you can talk to them about all of those kind of things. Yeah, most of these things, like lots of illnesses too, are caused by spirit attachment. Lots of cancers in children are caused by spirit attachment to children. Lots of cancers, uh, uh, lots of illnesses like diabetes are caused by spirit attachment. Right. 
Can you do it at a distance? Sorry? Can you speak to them at a distance? Yeah, well there's no distance for them, for the spirit. You can start talking to the spirit. Hang on a sec, you know, what you're doing here is... You know, it's not very good really what you're doing here. You're damaging this person's body. You know, a lot of them don't even know they're in somebody else's body. A lot of them are so bound to the earth, they want to keep experiencing the earth, they'll do anything to stay here, including in try to inhabit somebody else's body. Now, if we're asking the spirits to leave from somebody else's body, do we need to ask that person's permission first to remove well, those spirits from their body? Or? Well, the first thing we need to respect is that the person has a law of attraction yeah. and the spirit has a law of attraction. So my suggestion is we don't ask them to leave the body. I never ask them to leave. Mm -hmm. I tell them what they're doing. Tell, just tell them the truth. This is the spirit or the person? Both. Both. Yeah, I don't tell them they have to break up, and I don't tell them they have to leave, I don't tell them any of those things. I just say to them that you, this is the truth of what's happening here, you are harming this person. Just see, with, there was one spirit that I encouraged to just spe step out of the body for a while, little while and look at the damage they've just done. And this man stepped out, of, this spirit stepped out of the body and looked at the lady's body that he was connected to. And all of the diabetes that was, eaten, you know, the damage in the pancreas region that he'd done, he saw. And he'd done it to her father and her grandfather. So and he'd, actually, he'd actually killed successively three generations of their family by his attachment mm -hmm. through diabetes. It was because of an emotion that was the yes. same as their emotions. And we talked to him about that and when he understood that, he stayed out of her body. Now that didn't guarantee somebody else wouldn't come in because she needs to do with her emotion. Yes. But he voluntarily stayed out of her body. You don't need to kick him out. Like. <laughs> All you need to do is reason with them and talk to them. Like, how many of you want to stay in a place that you find confining? You won't, will you? You'd only have some good reasons if you did. Some big fears what, what or whatever. spirit enjoyed doing that to that person? I wouldn't say he enjoyed it. He didn't know what else to do. Okay. He had no idea of what else to do. And so he just did it. And he didn't know the damage he was doing. He just thought he was going from body to body and they were dying on him. <laughs> so that's what he thought. He didn't know. It wasn't until he was explained to him and, and we got a spirit to come to him to help explain as well what was going on. It wasn't until all of that occurred that he actually realised what was going on. So many spirits are doing one body at the same time. I've seen some with 30. <laughs> Through a law of attraction. Some manic depressed persons with 30. How do they manage to attract them? Yeah. They're highly mediumistic people, uh, in particular, these people were. You know, they, they'd be brilliant mediums, mm -hmm. uh, but they were having really big childhood feelings of powerlessness that they were refusing to accept, so they'd become addicted to power, and their spirits were keeping them really powerful. And they were, like, they were, they were sleeping one hour a day mm -hmm. and doing all sorts through the other 23 hours a day. Yeah. And the spirits were keeping them alive, keeping them in that state for as long as possible. And what happens? It exhausts the body eventually. And then when it exhausts the body, the connection drops out completely, and they just go wham over. So what happens when they put these people on medication? And it disconnects the spirits a bit, but not not wholly. So a lot of people who are schizophrenic, it disconnects the contact with the spirits a bit, but it doesn't actually stop some of the voices appearing in their head and whenever there are moments of clarity those voices reappear uh, and that's why a lot of times one of the voices that reappears for a schizophrenic is they are poisoning you mm -hmm. the reason why this why the spirit says that is he's being, pushed he's being pushed away for a bit and he doesn't like that he wants the connection back so the patient stops the medication so the patient stops the medication and he gets the connection back